All right. Well, good afternoon. Uh, Y'all are my third cluster session of the day, so I'm hoping to uh, keep it fresh and as energetic as possible. Uh, we'll see. Uh, usually energy kind of wanes when you've done this a couple times, so, uh, so I'll do my best. Uh, once again, I'm Chad Boninger. I am the business librarian and head of user services for the libraries. And um, so y'all are venturing into project two, which is actually my favorite part of the cluster research process. Um, and the reason I like it is because one, y'all get to choose something, you know, kind of in the industry that you're interested in doing, right? And two, uh, I think in order to be successful, there's a handful of tools I'm gonna show you today that uh, I highly recommend that you use, all right? And what's interesting about these tools is they kind of elevate your research skills uh, kind of to the next level because, um, you know, these tools, you can't simply just type in, you know, travel industry or tourism or whatever and get something, right? You've got to, you got to know a little bit about the industry, which you all already do, right? Um, and then you've got to go in and kind of navigate the tools and find available information. And I use the word available intentionally, uh, available information that you can use to tell your story, okay? To tell your story about your, your consumer, you know, the demand of your particular, uh, uh, business concept as well as if you choose a particular physical location like why you chose that place right so um, now I mentioned I, I use the word available intentionally because you know as you're doing new business concepts you're not going to have a you know a nugget of information for every single like idea that you want to do right you know so you have to kind of use available uh, available content right so um, as example uh, let's say I want to start a uh, bicycle tour business like in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Okay, and I'll, I'll use this as my example as I go through some of these uh, um, tools. Um, there's not really data or demographic data that we have available for the Chattanooga, Tennessee area on the number of people who would like to do a bicycle tour. Okay, but we can find information on the number of people who actually ride bicycles regularly for exercise and, and, and leisure and that kind of stuff. So I could use that kind of nugget information to, to, you know, add to my story about, you know, why I want to choose this location for this particular, you know, bicycle tour uh, concept, if you will. Okay, so just one example, right? So you just kind of have to look at available information and, and use that to your best of your ability. Okay. So I'll go ahead and share my screen and uh, we'll get started with looking at some of these resources. Um, and once again, we'll go off of my uh, travel and tourism industry guide. And for the sake of what we're working on today, we're going to spend all of our time looking at the local market info tab. Uh, we did not talk about this tab uh, at our last session together, uh, mainly because you know most of these tools in this area um aren't used to the extent that they are for local market information that so you would not have used them that much for for p1 okay so um the tools in this area will help you to look at you know local industry ratios and and statistics for industries in a local market as well as you know potentially identify competitors or industry peers uh, in the market all right uh, also look at general demographics for the region that you might want to operate in uh, as well as look at potential consumer demand and that kind of stuff. OK, so we're going to start uh, with a database called BizMiner. And uh, what BizMiner does, uh, they aggregate industry information, a lot of financial information for um, uh, companies in a particular industry in, a, in locations. OK, and then they anonymize that data and they present it using kind of industry averages and this kind of stuff, okay? So uh, for my example, I'm just gonna search for tour and um, I'm gonna find uh, information just for like tour operators, right? So now if you are doing, again, if you were doing like a, you know, Chad's, if I was gonna do Chad's uh, beer, beer hall and brewery tour, right? Uh, there's not anything in here for, for brewery tours, but there is stuff for winery tours, which might be relevant, right? Uh, there's also information here just on the brewery industry in particular locations, so we could use that potentially as a as a proxy, as a substitute for telling our story, right? To add to my um, uh, information that, that that basically I use to say this is why this business concept is 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 going to work or whatever, right? 
Um, so you do see a search for tour gives us all kinds of stuff. You can also go in um, if you were in here and didn't search, you could also click on all industry tools here and then go go through and kind of browse by industry. OK, so here's like, you know, accommodation and food service or arts and recreation. You know, you can kind of go through and, and browse you know, through these areas to find you know, relevant things that are that's your that would pertain to your your industry. OK, so let me go back uh, to my my search here and we'll search for tour again. Uh, you can see that uh, tour operators is in the, in the area of five six one five two zero. So now that you know that, uh, you could go back to uh, the home page and go to all industry search tools. And so here's your five six. I don't know why they put it administrative support waste remediation. That's really bizarre. But if we do five six, uh, you know, here's your here's your travel arrangement and recreation services, right? Um, other services, other support services, this kind of stuff. So you can kind of see uh, here's our tour operators, uh, travel agencies, things like that. So you can kind of see how it's organized by um, industry code in those in those areas. OK, so back to our tour operators. And um, uh, looky there, there is a bicycle tour. What do you know? That's cool. OK. Um, I have no idea what a travel escort service is. That sounds kind of nefarious to me. I'm not sure what that's all about, so we'll skip that one. Um, so let's go into tour operators. Uh, and you can see there's about 8,401 establishments in BizMiner in the US that they're, that they're working with for our data. OK, so I'm going to do show reports here. All right. Now in here for uh, the cluster experience, I tend to point people to these two reports on the right side first, and then uh, look at potentially this U.S. industry report later on. Okay, um, so the way this the way this works for all of them, you basically just go in, and I'll just kind of show you how this works for for this one. Um, and then I've I've got a sample of each open already because they do take a little bit to generate these reports, so a little bit of time to generate these reports. So I'll select a, a market area here. And you can see because we've got you know 8,400 companies to work with, we can look at you know states, we can look at cities, uh, we could go in and look at a county market if the county is big enough to have you know multiple establishments to measure to look at to look at, right? Uh, you can also do a radius, and what a radius would be is you'd basically say this is my pinpoint on the map, right? And I want to look at all of the companies that are in that circle around my. Uh, around my pinpoint on the map up to you know 25 you know 100 miles you know 50 miles whatever right so uh, for the sake of our interest we're just going to look at the state of Ohio and we'll go down and grab uh, Ohio here and uh, we'll click access now now I have been noticing that this is acting a little bit goofy you click on it it doesn't look like it's doing anything but it actually is working it's just not you know, you don't see a loading button or anything like that, but it will eventually take you to this this next page here. And what we're looking for, uh, you can you can see there's multiple uh, formats of this report. There's a you know an Excel file, there's a PDF version, and there's an HTML version. Um, I usually use the HTML version to start with. Um, and what that looks like, I've already got one open because they can take a little bit of a couple minutes to actually generate the report. But they open up and they look like this. And so this is the um, industry market report for tour operators uh, within the state of Ohio. OK, and they open up just like this. And the first thing I would encourage you to do, you see it opens up in the competitors tab as a default, is first to look at the map. And I actually usually don't actually use the map too much. Uh, I actually spend more time looking at uh, the names of some of the companies that they're classifying into this industry. OK, so here we see there's a there's a student travel company. There's Lone Wolf Charters. There is um, apparently a historical church tour. That's interesting, right? We have uh, Columbus Brew Adventures, right? We've got uh, Lake Erie Fishing Charters. That sounds like a, a tour company. Uh, Mina or Mina Tours and Travels, different different companies like that. OK, so we know we're kind of on the right right path here looking at, at these uh, companies. Now this gives you an idea um, potentially to kind of brainstorm, you know, uh, types of businesses that you might want to, to do your project about, uh, as well as look at potential um, 
uh, competitors or peers in the industry in, in a particular location. OK, now each of these will have um, a little bit of information here. You can see they give you a, a broad sales bracket. OK, because we're dealing with a small privately held companies, we don't they can't give you exact um, sales information because that's that's private. Um, however, they can give you kind of a, a band in which this company is expected to to uh, uh, to be in as far as it as the size of its of its revenues and such. OK. So you can use this to kind of look at other companies in the area and I'll show you another place to, to look at uh, here in a, in, a, in a second. I'm actually going to write down that tree frog canopy tours to see if I can't find that company uh, in another database here in a second tree frog canopy. To try to find more information on it on that company. OK. All right. So uh, we also have Columbus Brew Adventures. We might try that one too if that one doesn't work out. OK, so up here uh, we also have things like you know the market uh, and this breaks it down by the total size of the industry and small businesses and startups. And you can see here's the you know the total industry market volume for startups, for example, uh, within the overall larger industry. OK. You also have sales information, so it kind of breaks it down like what an average site looks like. So an average site is 1.2 million. In 2020, uh, probably if you want to go back to a, a normal time, if you will, you know, look at 2019 was 1.5 million and startups were like 1.4. Uh, that sort of thing. That's that's an that's an average annual sales. OK, uh, speaking of startups, we can go over here to this tab over here in the right kind of right middle and look at startups here. Uh, here we see that there were 10 startups in 2019, four in 2020, and you can see the the overall market share here of what those uh, what what percent of the market those startups took uh, in that year. OK, so um, so that gives you some good information there. This is a good way to kind of. Um, basically uh, to adjust your expectations to make sure you're not coming out of the gate thinking, uh, well, my my company is going to make five million dollars in the first year. Uh, if you said that, you know, we could look at something like this and be like, probably not likely, at least in this industry, right, based on the industry averages across the board, right? So um, in addition to startup performance, we also have cessation, which is basically firms that are either going out of business or ex exiting uh, the, the business area, okay? So you have information uh, for that kind of stuff as well, okay? Likewise, you've got, you know, how many people these, these companies typically employ, um, all kinds of other stuff that you can look at within here, okay? The other report that you can look at, and this is one of the ones that was, uh, let me go back a few pages here. Um, let's see, go back. Went back too far, I think. Yeah, sure did. Before. Yeah, so the other report uh, that, that I'd recommend you looking at from the start is this competitive market narrative. Um, what these give you is basically similar information to what we have in the in the kind of the map view thing, but with a lot more kind of like textual analysis that kind of gives you some more perspective on the, the local industry conditions for that industry uh, in that local market that you're looking at. OK, so it'll compare basically the the local market to US averages, right? So that's a that's a pretty cool uh, way of looking at it. So. So here we see. Uh, um, uh, so, you know, pretty, pretty good stuff that you can find in there. OK, so here we have, you know, just basically annual sales information, all kinds of stuff that you can look at as far as how, how the industry is performing. OK, uh, finally, back here, I'm not going to go into it for the sake of time, but these these financial reports are really good. Uh, if you're looking at things like uh, how much does a company typically spend on uh, wages or, or advertising or um, uh, their inventory, that kind of stuff, right? So their their cost of doing business, right? Cost of sales, which would be their, you know, their equipment that they rent or stuff like that, right? So that would be under this, uh, typically under this uh, U.S. industry financial reports as well. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go into Mergent Intellect, and now that we have an idea as far as what the local industry conditions are like, we might want to drill down a little bit more and look at specific companies in the industry to try to figure out who some of the dominant players are, what their overall market share might be, uh, as well as some other information about some of the companies or, or peers in the industry. 
So we can use uh, Emergent Intellect for that. There's a couple of different ways to use it. Uh, one, we can go up here and let's try to search for uh, that company I wrote down earlier, Tree Frog Canopy. All right, so here's Tree Frog Canopy Tours. Looks like there's a couple different ones uh, in Ohio. Uh, let's we'll just choose one here. We'll choose the one making the most money. All right. So here we have this company. Uh, we have um, notice down here we've got a, a NAICS code and an SIC code. Here's a uh, these are what we'll use here in a second to try to figure out if we can find other companies similar to this one in our location. OK, we also have uh, sales. Now this is these are sales estimates. OK, so um, but it's at least closer than what we found over there in. Um, uh, in Bizminer, because these over here were just basically a, a uh, an overall kind of average, if you will. Right. So uh, so, so we have something that's a little bit closer uh, to the actual uh, uh, sales information, right? We have uh, how many employees they have. We also have things like um, the year of founding, how long they've been in business, right? So that's pretty cool. So we know kind of what we're up against as far as competitors in the area, as far as if we're looking at, you know, companies that have been in the area a long time, we might have a harder time of our company taking root, okay? So there's all kinds of stuff you can find here for these uh, companies. Again, we have, uh, we have um, a website, that we can look at uh, for um, for the company to see what else kind of information that they're that they uh, that the, whether kind of business the company does that sort of thing. OK. So uh, we could do that. We could do that over and over again, but it's not very time effective. So what I'm going to do uh, to find multiple companies kind of in the same um, same business is I'm going to go back to the home page here and I'm going to go down to advanced search. And what I want to do is basically build a list of all the tour operators or tour companies, similar kind of companies uh, in the state of Ohio. OK, uh, actually, for my example, for this example, I'll do I'll do Nashville, Tennessee, just for just for a different example. OK, so I'm going to go and uh, first look at industry here. And I'm going to start with this SIC keyword search here. All right. So I'm going to go and search for a uh, tour and just let it do its thing here. All right, so here we have uh, tour operators. OK, and we also have if we scroll down, here's tours conducted. OK, we also have uh, uh, tour and guide services. OK, so we might want to do repeat the same search that I'm going to do in a couple different ways using some of the different industry codes, okay? And all these codes are doing, they're basically a label that the database sticks to a company. And so when we go in and say, hey, show me all the tour and guide services um, uh, companies, it's gonna extract those for us in a list, okay? So, uh, so you can kind of use that, all right? You can also go, you can use this, the keyword search, right? But you can also go under this SIC tree here, okay? And so if we were under um, the services here, okay, and here is our, where were we? We were at uh, amusement and recreation services, okay, and let's see, here is our, in, not elsewhere classified, okay, and here we have, um, let's see, tour and guide services, right? So we could go in and kind of browse this way, and here we see we've got, hunting guides, rafting tours, trail guides, all this kind of stuff as well, okay? So so that's one area we might look for companies in the, or uh, industries and companies in the in an industry, okay? We also see there was another code that we saw that was a for uh, transportation, and it was under uh, transportation services, 4-7, and here we have tour operators and travel agencies, okay? So you can kind of see there's there's multiple ways to to find probably similar or overlapping information. OK, so I want to do uh, tour operators just for my example here. And once we have that selected, we scroll down and we add to our criteria. All right, this finds approximately 24,000 companies in the US who uh, Mergent Intellect says are engaged in this business. Uh, we don't want to look for through 24,000 companies, so we're going to limit this down by locations. Let's do location here. And let's start off looking at state and we'll look at uh, Tennessee. And we will add that to our criteria. Now we're down to 441. And if we go back up and do city, 
And let's look for Nashville. Okay, now bear in mind, this is going to find companies with the address of Nashville, Tennessee. It won't find companies just outside of Nashville, like where my brother lives in Franklin, Tennessee, because that's a Franklin, Tennessee address, not a Nashville, Tennessee address. Okay, so if we wanted to get something better, you know, more broad, we might want to do either a radius search or a metro area search. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Okay. So let me do Nashville, add that to my criteria. Now I've got 156 companies. I'm pretty satisfied with that. And now I can go in and search for uh, tour operator companies in Nashville, Tennessee, and get this list of 156 companies. Okay. Now we could go in and select each indiv individual one and find information about each one, but that's going to take a lot of time for 156 companies. Okay. So, so what I want to do is go over here and use this build files menu on the right hand side to go in and, and create a list and extract whatever data I want to from these company records. Okay. So before I do that, I've got to go and select all the companies. And then I can go up here and click on the build files up here uh, in the top right of the screen. Uh, this is going to open up another uh, menu. And from here, if I just went down and click submit, I'm going to get a ton of stuff I probably don't want or need. And I'm going to have a, an Excel sheet that's like five miles wide, right? I don't really want that because I'm going to wind up hiding all those columns that I don't need anyway. So what I'm going to do is choose fields. And this allows, it basically clears everything out and allows me to choose what I want to choose for my particular report. All right. Now, obviously, I want the company name. Uh, I mentioned before I like to know when the company was founded because I want to know, you know, if I'm up to up against new companies or companies that have been there a long time, right? Uh, we might want to get their website. Here's our web address over here. You can see there's all kinds of stuff we can look at. I'm also want to look at maybe their physical address, and we want to compare sales and how many employees they have, just so we're comparing, you know, sizes of companies in the, in the area. Okay. And if we keep scrolling down here, uh, we do see there's a lot of financial information. Uh, don't get too excited about this because this is mostly a, mostly applies to publicly traded companies, and most of our companies we're going to be looking at are not publicly traded. So we're going to be basically getting estimated sales, uh, and that's about it. Okay. Um, however, down here at the bottom, I do want to point out there's this executive information. Okay. And this is a good place. I'm going to select uh, all these here. This is a good place if you were going to um, uh, put together a call list or a contact list uh, or an email list or something phone list to send your you know catalog to or to call on a company to sell something to them or even as a student uh, maybe email um, you know people in the industry in a business to say hey how are what are the conditions like in, in that area what's your you know what you know something you know, let them know you're a student of course but you can you know contact some companies and say hey i'm doing this assignment do you mind asking answer a few questions here's what i got right um this is also a good way if you are interested in pursuing uh employment uh in our particular city in a particular location you can do the same search that i did and find a list of some major companies in the area in a particular industry that you're interested in working and now you've got a list of people once we generate this who you might contact with your resume or whatever and say hey what kind of employment opportunities are available at your company right now so it's not only good for project research but it's also good for for life research as well okay so i want to call this uh tour three and we will build my file here and what will happen is this will give me a um an opportunity to download my file or email it to myself. Uh, sometimes if your file is too big, you only have the option to email it because it's got to do the crunching on the backside. And so what this gives us is an Excel file. Um, and we'll say yes here. That basically looks like this. So we have, um, now we've got my, uh, everything I've asked for for it. I've got the company name, I've got a web address, I've got the year of founding, right? I've got sales. And I've got, you know, how many employees that they have, right, for uh, for the company, right? So I can use this uh, as a way to kind of identify uh, some of the major players in the industry, uh, in the field, or in in the in the uh, in the particular uh, market. Okay, in this case, Nashville, Tennessee. Okay, 
So it's a really cool feature, a really cool way to kind of go in and find information. All right, and now we've uh, down below, uh, we have a sheet here in our workbook for the exec information. And so now we see, um, now we see uh, information about some of the executives, right? Uh, and who, you know, what their names are. Here's Laura Ellis, she's the president. That's her phone number of, I think it's Mom Enterprises Incorporated, right? So, um, so pretty cool way to find people who you might contact uh, within the industry, all right? Okay, so the last one I'll show you here is a database called Simply Analytics. And uh, the name Simply Analytics is a little bit of a misnomer because it's not really too simply easy to use. Um, but uh, and as a matter of fact, if you get stuck using this thing, you can also you can ask me questions. But if you want to learn on your own, I have a, a a tips and tricks guide that's linked everywhere that Simply Analytics is linked. That basically gives you uh, the ins and outs of how to create reports, how to map data, how to use uh, you know uh, business data in within the database. Okay, so you you can use that if you wanted to kind of learn at your own pace. Uh, these these have. Uh, you know, step-by-step -step instructions as well as some videos that can, will kind of walk you through that kind of stuff, okay? All right, when you first get to Simply Analytics, you can sign in as a guest. Uh, I would encourage you to create your own account using your Ohio ID uh, or Ohio email address and whatever password you want. Um, I'm gonna log in as me here, and my account has been taking a little bit to log in. I'm not sure uh, why, but we will, um, Hopefully it loads quicker than it has for our previous classes. Um, it's gonna do this little thing again, I think. It will eventually load. While it is loading, I am going to save a little bit of time. And, um, you know, since we're waiting on that to do its thing, um, I do want to highlight um, again uh, the get help from Chad tab. If you need help, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, probably for project two, um, most of your questions can are probably best uh, addressed in a an appointment. Okay, and so that'll take you to uh, my page uh, where you can schedule either an online or in-person appointment. Um, my uh, calendar currently books out. Um, um, uh, right now, we're, we're basically booking out 24 hours in advance or so. Okay, so just bear that in mind, right? So if your if your project is due at Friday night, uh, it's going to be hard to book a time, you know, Friday during the day if you wait until Thursday, right? So so definitely make sure you um, uh, do that at well in advance. Okay, be glad to help you. Just make sure you you um, schedule enough time in advance to do that kind of stuff. Okay, so this is what I was working on last time and. You know, remember what I was working on, which is kind of cool because I don't have to go back and repeat the process, even though I am going to repeat the process for the sake of this demonstration. So you can see I built a comparison table. Uh, let's just say I was trying to do a bicycle tour company and I was kind of stuck between Chattanooga, Tennessee, which is my hometown and Columbus, Ohio. OK, so what I did is I went through and I built a comparison table comparing a few variables that I think might be important for me to use to tell my story uh, on whether I want to choose Chattanooga or Columbus for for my tour company, right? So here we have data on the number of people who are projected to have gone, um, um, you know, uh, participated in mountain biking or road cycling in the last 12 months, uh, the percent of the population who are projected to have engaged in the activity, Right, and then we have people who participated like every chance they get. So these are your hardcore cyclists, right? So, so this reads like you know, according to the data, the mathematical projection, that kind of stuff. Um, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, 2.57 percent of the population is projected to have uh, said, "I really like to bicycle every chance I get," versus 2.74 percent in Columbus, Ohio, uh, versus the national average of 2.7 percent. Okay. So, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna look at this like like this. All right. Um, now I'm gonna start a new project, kind of show you how this works. And the way Simply Analytics works, it's location based. So you got to start off first with your location. And so I'm gonna do uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. 
And I'm not going to choose this Nielsen section. I'm going to show you how to use that Nielsen data here in another search here in just a second. I'm going to use do Chattanooga, Tennessee right here, and I am going to do uh, Columbus, Ohio. Same thing, just go look at the city. Okay. Now we can also do um, we can also do zip codes. So we can do the zip code, like for example, where my parents live. We can also do uh, you know counties. Right, so anything that's got a location, we can we can do this. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do next here, and uh, it doesn't want the database doesn't want to start you off with just like a staring at an empty screen, so it will give you uh, these seed variables. Now, typically, I will usually choose, you know, household income, maybe per capita income, you know, a couple of different things here, and then uh, create my project. Now, Simply Analytics used to be called Simply Map, and so the default loading screen once you load the thing is actually a map, but we're going to move past the map and come back to it in a little bit. Okay, um, what I want to show you is here's this uh, Quick Report tab here. Okay, so we've got Quick Report. So if you're just getting started, you want to know what kind of like maybe demographic stuff you might be able to gather for your local market. This is a great place to start here in the Quick Report. And what I like about this is that you can kind of go down the list of some of the most common available demographic content uh, and kind of select which ones you want to look at further. OK. So uh, so right now we're looking at Chattanooga, Tennessee uh, to Franklin County to all these things. And let's say, you know what, um, I'm going to really market my uh, bicycle tour service uh, to people uh, maybe age, um, let's do 35 to 44, and then 45 to 54. Okay, so we'll do that. And then if we scroll down, we see there's information about race. And let's look for maybe, I think maybe the hardcore people who would want to go on my bike tours because they're going to be pretty long bike tours. And, and um, you know, typically the people who like to ride longer typically have a, a, a a better bike and that typically costs more money. So I'm, I'm trying to think that maybe those people might be a little bit wealthier. So I'm going to look for people in that kind of wealthier, wealthier band. OK. And then uh, those wealthier people probably tend to be a little bit more educated. So I'm going to look at people uh, who have a bachelor's degree. OK. All right. So and you can kind of go down and, and see some more stuff. So all right. So once we're satisfied there, if I go over to my comparison table, um, I'm like, hey, what happened? I just I just added all that stuff over here. What happened? Well, I basically kind of put that stuff in my shopping cart, but I didn't actually put it in my report. OK, so I'm going to go up here under this view actions and basically edit my view or grab stuff from my shopping cart, if you will. OK, so you can see all this stuff is now down here. So I'm going to I'm going to select. Uh, I'm actually going to get rid of that stuff and just kind of simplify some things and let's look at um per capita inc let's look at my age group and let's look at my uh number and percent who are in a particular income band okay and we'll look at our educational level as well okay and uh i don't really want to look at actually i'm going to leave that in there just to kind of show you what you can do here let's leave that there for a second click done okay now we've got a, a little bit simpler uh uh, grouping here of my variables. Let's say, you know, if I don't want the number, but just want the percentage, I can click here, remove that from my report, et cetera. Okay, so I can just do that kind of stuff. And I'll do that for a couple of these things just to kind of um, make our list a little bit more easy to easier to navigate here. And likewise over here, uh, let's say I want to look at the zip code first before the city. You can kind of move things around that way. Uh, that way you're looking at things in a way that makes sense to you. Uh, I'm going to get rid of my zip code here for, for the time being and get rid of Franklin County as well. OK. All right, so we've got some data here. Uh, now I want to look at the, my bicycle component. I want to look at information about people who do who do bicycling. So I'm going to search for uh, uh, bicycle as, in the under the data tab here. All right. So I search for bicycle. And uh, so I've got stuff for, you know, transportation to work. I don't, really don't want that. Um, the people who um, who have a taxi cab or ride a taxi cab or bike to work, that kind of stuff. So I'm 
oh, here's what I want. Over here on the left-hand side, I see there's a information for consumer behavior. So let's let's look there. And here we see uh, we've got consumer expenditure on bicycles, which may be interesting. Uh, we've got people who watched uh, bicycling on TV in the last 12 months. That would probably be me because I, li I like to watch the Tour de France every every single summer in July. Um, if we scroll down some more, here we see people and the number of people who said they participate in in road or mountain biking or in, in the last 12 months. So let's let's grab those people. Um, I don't really care for the stationary folks because that might be a pretty boring bicycle tour if we're all sitting in the same room, right? Um, but if we scroll down some more, here we have information for people who participate in a sport. And a matter of fact, these folks said they participate every chance they get, right? So this is my, my hardcore cyclist, okay? So this might be my bike tour folks, or maybe it might be um, people who only do it occasionally, all right? So let's do, the, let's do that. Let's do the occasional people. So let's do uh, number who do it occasionally and percent, okay? And we'll close that out. And see now we've clicked on those. We now have our have our variables here. So here we have the percentage of people in each area who said they did bicycling in the last 12 months. So in this case, we're looking at this information. We might say, you know what, um, uh, Columbus might be the winner here, right? We've got 13.8% uh, of the population is said to or projected to have participated in cycling in the last 12 months. Uh, versus 11.7% uh, of the total adult population in the U.S., okay? Um, if we look at occasionally, again, Columbus wins here, 5.9% versus 5% versus Chattanooga, 3%, okay? So so pretty good information that we can find there to, to kind of better analyze our local market, all right? Now, what we can also do with this data is, uh, let's say we're, we're, we're opening a, a shop, right, that's going to be the place where, um, we're we're going to um, want to try to figure out like where we're going to um, uh, launch our bikes from. Okay, so I'm going to go over here to this map. And if you know anything about cities and city boundaries and that kind of stuff, they just kind of look nasty, right? Because they're they're artificially drawn, you know. So if I'm just limiting myself to a city, there's nothing to prevent somebody from over here outside the city limits to coming to partake of Chad's bicycle tour. OK, so what I really want is maybe people in the neighborhood of 25 to 50 miles away who are going to come in and, and partake of my bicycle tour company. OK, so what I'm going to do is go up here under locations and make my own custom kind of radius location. Right. So people who are within like a, you know, a, a, you know, an hour to two hour drive. OK, so I'm going to go up here and do locations. And I'll do custom location here. And what I'm going to do is grab, I'm just going to grab a random address. Um, I'm going to grab the REI from Chattanooga. Uh, random address. Uh, you can see I, I was indeed there like three weeks ago. Thanks, Google, for knowing where I am at all times. Um, so we will just choose this as my, my center, if you will. Okay. So uh, let me go back to my tab here, and we will do a create a new radius location. OK. Um, and I will do a location search here. And then do an address search. All right, you'll see once I do that, it finds Hamilton County, Tennessee, the big area. Then it finds Chattanooga, Tennessee, the smaller area, the zip code in which it operates. That's the same zip code as my parents, by the way. Um, we have the, the census track, which is a smaller region. And then the block group. The block group is basically the smallest chunk of land that's available in here. Okay, so we're going to do we're going to do block group here, and we're going to maybe do a radius of like let's do uh, I don't know let's do 100 miles just for giggles. Okay, and we will call this a uh, two-hour drive to Chad's bike tour. Okay. You know, thinking like if I do take people on a 25 mile bike tour, um, you know, they can drive over in the morning from wherever and then still have energy left to drive back late that night without having to do a hotel. Right. So. So I will save that and you can see it'll go in and do uh, this Chad's bike tour. Right. And so. Um, so you can see it, it, it segues over into Alabama, into Georgia, into Tennessee. It's one of the reasons that Chattanooga is called the tri-state area right there. 
Um, so you can kind of see uh, we're also getting to some Middle Tennessee area as well. OK, now I don't really like the way this thing looks. Um, I also am going to customize a couple of things right now. We're looking at just the total population up here in the top left. I can change this to any of the variables that I've already searched for. And so in this case, if I scroll down and find uh, percentage of people who like to uh, occasionally participate in road or mountain bicycling. Let's do that percentage of that. OK, and so now we've got a different looking map because we're looking at a different looking variable. OK. Now I don't like this color here. I'm going to go over here and edit this thing. And first thing I want to do is go in and change this classification method here. This, this seems kind of fancy. It's really not. All it's doing is changing these numerical ranges here. And if you change these numerical ranges, you may get a prettier, more vibrant map that shows the data more effectively. OK, so I'm going to change this to maybe let's do uh, natural breaks local to see if that does something different here. Yeah, it's not too bad. OK, so that's got us a, a different color map. We don't have as much white in the map, right? Um, and then we can change our color scheme. Uh, let's do a nice uh, kind of purplish. Right. And um, you can kind of see where you know it looks OK, but what we can do over here now is we can click on individual colors and change these a little bit. So you know, we can kind of go in. You can kind of make something really nasty if you're not not careful, but you can go in and change these colors to match like whatever your branding might be. Right. And the reason you might want to do that is because once you've got this map set up however you want to, uh, let's go and um, look at. Uh, let's see View. we can show map labels as well. So now we're going to show like zip codes, I think, or, or, or counties. So here we're showing counties, right? So once we do that, um, we can click done here and then we can export this thing. All right, so this is kind of cool. We can go in and export our map and I'm going to move this a little bit like this way. Uh, actually, let's go. Let's go that way. Keep some of that color over there. And we'll go that way and then we'll continue to our layout. And I don't want my in, my uh, index here in the uh, I'm going to move this down here, right? And then we can go up and add a text label on the left hand side here and call this uh, Chad's uh, bike tour customers. Okay, and we can drag this up here and you can also go in and change lots of colors and that kind of stuff up here as well. Okay, so then we can do that. We export it. We got a nice little homemade map uh, with some data. Uh, from um, uh, from simply analytics. OK, so that's 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 another way to use this thing. OK. All right, now the final way I want to look at this. Is um, whether I'm in a new project or I'm in an existing project, I'm going to look for a button called new view. OK, so right here I'm going to go over here and click on new view. And it's going to bring up this menu here and this if you're just starting out you just open up a brand new screen in simply analytics it might just open this thing up by default okay so i'm going to scroll down and at the very very bottom right there's this thing called scarborough cross tab tables okay so i'm going to go over here and create this thing now the thing about this scarborough cross tab data it kind of lives apart from all the other stuff that we've already done and i'll show you what i mean here in just a second um the first thing you do is you have to go in and select a location and you'll notice that they already have predefined locations that I have to choose from. I can't go in and choose Athens, Ohio. Athens, Ohio is not available in here. OK, these are uh, Scarborough designated market areas, DMAs. That's what that it stands for. OK, if I wanted Athens, Ohio, I'd have to choose like the next closest city, which would be Columbus, Ohio DMA. OK, and matter of fact, Col uh, Athens is within the Columbus, Ohio DMA. OK, and if you think of these DMAs, they're basically. For lack of a better way to explain it, it's it's basically where you could probably get television from like, you know, we get like Columbus News or whatever, you know, Columbus television in Athens, Ohio. So basically it's it's kind of that's the designated market essentially. Right. So it's it's kind of a, a, a dumbed down way of approaching it, but it's basically works like that. OK. So we have. Um, uh, here we have uh, Columbus, Ohio. Let's look at Chattanooga, Tennessee for my example here. All right, now you'll see 
over here, all that stuff that I've done before is grayed out. Okay, that's because all that data is separate from this Scarborough thing. Okay, the Scarborough thing, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to be is we're just going to be looking specifically at Scarborough data uh, within um, this part of the database. Okay, so we're going to go over and click on data. Oops, let me. All right, we got Chattanooga, Tennessee. We're going to click on data here. And um, I'm going to go in and browse this data folder thing. Okay, so here's this here's this data folder, and I'm going to click one more time to look at the Nielsen cross tab data. And the reason I did that is for this particular project, there's this whole section for activities and travel the past 12 months. Okay, so if I look at information in here, here we have things like, and this is all data for people from Chattanooga, Tennessee, which is pretty awesome, okay? So here we see um, events attended or places visited in the last 12 months, okay? So let's just look at this. If we're looking for anything related to travel or whatever in the area, okay? So here we have, um, and this this isn't necessarily related to my bicycle example, by the way, okay? So um, this, is, this is related to the fact that with this Scarborough data, you're able to get specific information that is only available or known about that local market okay as example if we scroll all the way down here to the bottom uh well if we keep scrolling down we see that this is the activities or travel the past 12 months uh people who've been to dollywood which is dolly parton's theme park in pigeon forge tennessee near gatlinburg um, what percentage of the population has been there from chattanooga okay if we scroll down some more here we have, uh, have you been to the Ironman triathlon? Okay, um, Chattanooga has an Ironman triathlon every, not that they participate in it, right? But they've been to it and watched it or whatnot, okay? Uh, if we scroll down some more, if you've been to the Tennessee Aquarium, Chattanooga has a fantastic freshwater aquarium. Or if you've been to uh, Times Square, I guess enough people in Chattanooga have been to New York, so there's, a, there's a data variable for that, okay? Or you've been to University of Tennessee football game, okay? So we have all this kind of data here, all right? So we've got that. If we close out of here, now we've got this information over here. Now let's have something to compare it to. So we wanna look for demographics of people who have done this activity in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now we can go back over to our category here and let's look at maybe uh, gender, let's do that. And let's look at males and let's look at males age, uh, 20 let's look 35 to 49 maybe let's look at that okay and then let's look at females um age 35 to 49. all right so we have we have that information okay now what i like to do actually i like to put this is kind of dumb but this my personal preference i like to put my activities uh, at the top in the columns and my demographics or the thing that i'm comparing it to in the rows and it's just my personal preference OK. We can also do, you know, we're looking at demographics right here, but we can also say, all right, so um, let's look for. Let's look for hotel information, OK, and maybe. Um, percentage of people who stayed at a bed and breakfast. Let's do that. Or who stayed in a. Um, let's stay at, at a Hilton. All right, just an example. OK, so um, now we've got this information here um, and let's go and look at our report. All right, so if you look at this right here, uh, it's nice because Simply Analytics will actually read your data to you. OK, so if we start at the top and if we scroll down here. This says of all the people in this group, all the people who were surveyed from Chattanooga, Tennessee, okay, 18.4% um, of them uh, are men aged 35 to 49, all right? Whereas 11.7% of the people who went to Dollywood are women aged 35 to 49, okay? Um, of the people who went to Dollywood, 12.7% uh, of them have stayed in a Hilton in the last 12 months. Right, so you can see how you can use this kind of information to kind of build build a table that kind of tells your story, right? Um, 
So here we see uh, let's see. Here's uh, people who went to an Ironman triathlon. 18.1% of them are um, 35 to 49. 21% of them uh, have stayed at a Hilton in the last 12 months. Okay. Um, and you, you know, you can kind of think about that. You know, Ironman triathlons tend to, um, people who engage in those kind of activities might, you know, be buying more expensive bikes. Uh, they might be traveling to further places to do their activities. So they might have a little bit more discretionary income. And therefore, they might be more inclined to stay at a more expensive hotel like the Hilton, right? So you kind of see how you can use this kind of stuff to kind of, build a consumer profile of these people who do who went to this event or did this travel and tourism activity okay so so cool stuff there all right so that's all i want to show you uh, of that one different stuff you can use it for again it's it's not quite too simply to use but it it is a very very powerful uh resource uh particularly for for project two okay all right so uh, once again, if you need help, look anywhere on my site, you'll find different links to get help. Uh, if you need help with, with anything, uh, just give me a little bit of lead time, a little bit of uh, make sure when you when you contact me, make sure you give me a, a pretty good chunk of information as far as what you've been working on, what you what you're having, what you're struggling with finding that kind of stuff, because that'll that'll give me a little bit of a better chance of, of helping you uh, in a more efficient fashion. So. All right, I will stop sharing. And I'm going to stop recording and turn it over to you guys.